The beginning was filled with all kinds of wonderful things, which means I came from a very privileged background. And um, I was one of three daughters, and my mom was a John Robert Powers model. She was extremely beautiful. Daddy was a polo player that had just everything you could possibly imagine and a seat on the New York Stock Exchange. And he fell in love with this beautiful woman, this beautiful model, and married her and had these three beautiful daughters. And they had this very wild, kind of wonderful life in a big 40-room mansion on the Jersey Shore across from the ocean. So from the outside, it looked like we had everything. Milton Untermeyer's inherited fortune placed his three daughters in the blessed cradle of unlimited abundance. In the early 50s, they lived in their grandfather's brownstone on 57th and Madison, where they attended the most prestigious private Catholic girls' school in New York. And every weekend, the family fled the city to enjoy Evergreen Farm, their estate by the Jersey Shore. The sad part that nobody ever knew about was that mother was an alcoholic. She had it all, and I watched her destroy herself day by day. So something about her life was completely unfulfilled, and what she did is she drank. I was dying to figure out what to be able to do to assist my mother in becoming a happy person. So from the age of 11, 12, 13, I would sit with her and I'd ask her questions. And I actually learned how to drink with her and smoke with her and hang out with her and spend until wee hours of the morning asking her questions. So I always say that mommy was my first client. Well, Lynn is a middle child and she was the peacemaker. And she was the enabler. She was the one who was trying to make sense out of her reality by getting to know mother and spending time with her. I handled my circumstances differently. I basically disconnected from that family of origin because I thought that their behavior was rather crazy, erratic, and dysfunctional. Albert Einstein once said, the important thing is to never stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. And it started in me, in a very young age, to ask the questions, what is the nature of happiness? If money doesn't buy happiness, where does one find happiness and fulfillment? I wanted to know, because I could see myself following in her footsteps and being incredibly unhappy. But I really thought, if there's anything that this is here to teach me, it's to find out what is the purpose of life. So we went through this amazing roller coaster of this incredible life that looked to the world as if it was glamorous and beautiful, and it was, on one level. And then we had the mommy story that was very sad. And uh, she finally died of cirrhosis of the liver. And when daddy remarried, which he did a year after mother passed away, he ha had, a, had what, what we would call a, 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 mid, a midlife crisis after mother died. And um, when he died, which was 10 years later, we found out the sad, sad truth, which was that all three girls were disinherited. Well, it was an end of an era. Because our father sold our family home in New Jersey. He sold our apartment in New York. And he basically said, uh, goodbye. Life as you knew it is over. This event deepened their search for illumination. Cherie had pursued a career in teaching to appease her mother, then immersed herself in acting to satisfy her childhood dream. Neither one delivered the fulfillment she yearned for. In those days, life didn't feel anything like a game, and no one seemed to know any of the rules. And I was in the process of going through a premature midlife crisis of trying to figure out, what am I doing here? What is the purpose of my life? What do I have to contribute? And what's going to create a condition of fulfillment and satisfaction for me in my life? I meditated, I prayed, I asked. I really had a talk with God and I said, look, you know, I'm, I really wanna know. I feel like I'm bouncing around in life like it's a big pinball machine and I'm one of the little balls bouncing around in the game and I'm tired of it. I'd really like to know what I'm doing here and I'd like to get on with it. It's enough. I could actually say to God, I want you to tell me. I want an answer. 
I want a message. She asked and she received. To her surprise, not one, but several messages were delivered. I started getting messages, big messages, it's random things like, um, you are to be a catalyst. You're to work in growth and development. Um, you know, and then the last one that I finally got two weeks later said, you, you have a gift for working with people. What started as simple childlike questions organically grew into transformational life coaching. In 1974, Dr. Cherie Carter Scott became the original life coach and founded Motivation Management Service. Joined by her sister Lynn Stewart, they created a team that would touch, inspire, and change the game of life as we know it today. Life is a game. Rule number one, rule number five, rule number eight, rule number four. I love this, and these are the rules. Dr. Cherie Carter Scott received international notoriety for several of her bestsellers, including the number one New York Times bestsellers, If Life is a Game, These Are the Rules, published in over 40 languages worldwide, and Negaholics, How to Overcome Negativity and Turn Your Life Around, featured on Oprah. Ten simple rules to being human. People, please bring the camera in. Because if you can get this, this is going to be so big. She appeared on over 400 TV and radio shows as the doctor of overcoming negativity. And it isn't normal in society for people to abuse each other, to ridicule, to shame, and to embarrass. And finally, the sisters co-authored Transformational Life Coaching, which acknowledged and honored the work they had been conducting for over three decades. Millions have read their books, taken their workshops, coached training, and been coached by those they have trained. Lives have been transformed in private, and now it's time to finally bring them into the light. Human development is the business, whether it's personal or professional. And the MMS Institute and Dr. Sheree Carter Scott, all of the books and all of the work that she's doing are committed to individuals and organizations in having their goals, their dreams, and their missions become a reality. In essence to me, is like the Wizard of Oz. Because when people come to the workshop, they all have an objective. Some may want to have heart. One of the really monumental moments in the MMS coaching for me in the class was to be able to communicate something that I needed to communicate to my husband that I hadn't been able to communicate to him in the nine years we've been married. Others may be looking for courage. During the process, I noticed that uh, yeah, I, I came out of my shell and gradually I learned to open up. I learned that I could show my vulnerability. Others may be trying to develop their brain. I've been on a journey my whole life. And there's a lot of intellect, there's a lot of reading, there's a lot of experiential stuff. And what the coach's training did was it let me put things into application. And others may just be looking for home. Before, I felt like um, I was lost. And, and now I finally, I feel like um, I belong here. Whatever they come for, they find it. They find it in that environment of safety, that environment of permission, of encouragement, but validation. Dr. Cherie Carter Scott and Lynn Stewart made a choice early in life to not only empower individuals and organizations, but also to train coaches worldwide to facilitate people in transition through MMS's methodology. To ask those brilliant questions that enable people to discover their own answers to life's challenges, allowing them to manifest their visions, dreams, and goals. And seeing what happens to people when you just ask questions and have them design their own ways of getting their own answers, it was just amazing. The two most essential questions that I have really learned to embrace by the MMS is what do you feel and what do you want? When our assumptions are that people possess their own answers and they have the personal power 
to make those dreams become a reality. The power of MMS is that it will help people to get empowered. Another important part of MMS is um, the concept of choice. Every day, every moment in life, every day, I have the choice to say, uh, no, I don't want this. Actually, I want something else. And I can take a turn right and, and then I feel happy about myself. I feel proud because I made the choice of, and listened to what I want. For me, yeah, it was one of the most profound lessons that I took out of MMS. I always like the say of uh, Cherie when she says that uh, feelings are the lights on the dashboard of life. I mean, I really like that. Because, you know, if your car says it needs oil, you'll give it, right? So, if your dashboard says you need love or you need a special attention, you want to give it to yourself. It really touched the core of your being, your true self. And um, I've never been the same person since I took that class. MMS helped me design my life. It's like I'm on this um, new fountain of energy. And getting people in touch with their feelings through process and through the questions is what allows people to become free of all the cobwebs and all those incredible shackles that keep us tied to the sadness of life. It has to be experienced, it has to be released, and all the dust has to come out of the corners. It's like taking a toothbrush to every corner of your life and being clear that what you want is to be able to let go of anything that's in the way of you being really clear with what you need to do for you. Through transformational life coaching developed and authored by these two celebrated sisters, MMS certified coaches worldwide have learned the techniques to shine the light of possibility on those who are searching for peace, passion, purpose, and power. I think a good coach has a combination of a few qualities. A key one certainly is to have this, this want for other people to make a step. I mean, you must be able to connect to others. People walk through life feeling no value, and uh, I think that's a, a purpose or a goal in life for me to, to help everyone understand that they have purpose, they have value. And you use your own experience, your own life journey, your own stories to literally mirror that back to them. And what really attracted me about the MMS was the fact that we are ask and listen coaches instead of know and tell coaches. This is work that I feel compelled and motivated to share with the world. The big vision is teaching people to live in harmony. If life is a game, then sisters Dr. Cherie Carter-Scott and Lynn Stewart have clarified the age-old universal truths that constitute the rules. They have helped millions find their true path in life. It was such a great experience. It was such so wonderful. And I'm really, really grateful for that. It's, a po it's emotional poetry, I call it because they dig deep inside the bean and pull out the truth. And it's an amazing process to watch. And if the person is in a place of sharing and telling their truth, amazing things come out. And Dr. Shri and Lynn Stewart have created this process that give people a roadmap for life. They connect with their own vision mission, passion, truth, and then they go for it.